army gold it is day 23 you know that number is significant right do i know that number is significant jared yes that's the question i asked jordan i think that's why i got the name i have that is correct is that true though i think so our parents never told us yeah we'll have to ask pops maybe i was named after the jordan river mm. or the country jordan nonetheless the great michael jordan war number 23 mm -hmm. and today jordan we have a song that army tells us is for you for me yes so this is gonna be a hip hop -er, bop -er. so we're told or something something if it's not a hip bopper it might have just an insane beat okay based on army's messages and comments all right i can't wait to hear it yeah jerry we can't forget that it's thanksgiving day today that is correct happy thanksgiving everybody if you celebrate it we are elated to have you here with us for today's reaction video and that's npr people do tell us we sound like npr <laughs> npr radio hosts jerry we have a few comments to read yes from our beautiful patrons and then we are going to hear this hip-hop bopper yeah so let's do that let's go the first comment comes to us from our wonderful patron maka mars and maka writes o m g babe say it's in my top 10 of favorite bts songs and the performances to it I'm about to lose it just <laughs> thinking about it. I think this may be one of them ones. Maka no longer has to just think about it. Yeah. Because Maka is going to relive it with the content we have in store for you all today. Yeah. And can I just say one thing? No, you can't, Jared. Please. This is very important. Yes, you can, Jared. You always ask if you can just say one thing. Okay. You can say one well, thing. That was the wrong time to say no. You can say four things in five, ten. That say was the wrong time to say no. You're going to feel bad after this. Okay. What are you talking about? Maka sent us a message very recently. Okay. Um, informing us that she is going through some things. Yeah. I remember you showed me that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mm. she stated that it was okay for us to share her message we're not going to share her message but i just wanted to get it out there that you know maka was dealing with some things and i want army to show your support for maka and all of our other patrons who are dealing with things that's all i wanted to say so maka we're thinking of you as a matter of fact this reaction is dedicated to you shout out to you maka we are here for you this one's for you yeah jared the next comment comes from alana w and alana writes all of these choices are iconic in their own way and alana's referencing our poll yes army gold poll from last month it seems like ages ago oh my gosh uh, Bape Say was one of the first BTS songs that I heard, and the dance practice video is hilarious. This was a moment where I started to realize, okay, <laughs> I'm in this bong tan sh for oh, life. Snap. Pied Piper is my all-time favorite BTS song, okay. and the performance is legendary, which we saw. Oh yeah. So those are my two votes. All right. I love this, right? You Hype us what? up. Hype this song up. Get us ready. Hey, Jared. I'm curious to hear this song, man. Yeah. There's not too many hip-hop boppers left yeah. from what we're told. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alana. Yeah. The next comment is short and sweet. It comes from Ashley Frederick. And Ashley writes, OMG. Papesay. I'll die. Show what? 
Ashley. Ashley, should we click play or not? Not if Ashley's gonna die. No, Ashley is staying here with us. Oh, Ashley means die in a good way, yeah. which actually means live. Exactly. Okay. The then that, if that's the case, yeah. then okay. Thank you, Ashley. Don't scare us like that again, Ashley. Yeah. Uh, the next comment comes from our wonderful patron, Aparna. And Aparna writes, when you guys eventually do Bapesay, please, please, please make sure to check out DKDKTV's explanation video for it. The song just hits 10 times harder when you get that extra layer of perspective. Oh, yeah. It's been a while since we've checked out a DKDKTV yeah. explanation video. Okay. So this might be a, uh, a deep dive of a song yeah. that we are about to hear, Jim. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Aparna. The final comment comes to us <laughs> from the one and only Safi to the seventh. Safi to the seventh. Ooh, that's got a nice ring to it. And they write, okay, without giving away too much, Jordan, get the injections and defibrillator, defibrillator ready for Jared's reaction to Pied Piper and Dimple. I think you already injected me for those. So all we do when we need it is we put yeah. this on your chest. Okay. And you know where this goes, buddy. Okay, but today it's your day. So I think you're going to get the shot today. Oh, damn, that's right. We already yeah. heard Piper and Dimple. Yeah. God damn it. Well, Sa listen. Safi continues. Jared, make sure you buckle Jordan in his seat for BTS's iconic Bape Say. That's all I have to say. And Safi, I'm going to do you one better. Um, I'm going to get the injection and defibrillator out for this one instead of buckling. You ain't using that shit on me. I mean, what are we going to do then? Buddy, Safi told you to buckle me up. All right. If you insist. Damn. You, you almost pinched my leg. You ain't getting out. You ain't getting out. Mm. Damn. And Army, you ain't getting out either. Jorn, click that. Hold on. We need a bit of context before we click the play button, brother. Come on. But I'm right there with you. Come on. I'm right there with you. We just got to know a few things. All right. So on BTS Wiki, it says, Silver Spoon, also known as Bapese or Crow Tit. <laughs> <laughs> That's that a is, funny word. That is a hilarious term right there. That's a funny word, Army. Is a song by BTS. Jared, it's funny because it means the exact opposite probably of what you would think it would be. Really? Or maybe, do crows have boobs? <laughs> I, that's what do I- Do crows have boobs? That's what I think it means. Kid. No kidding. Look it up. Well, I think we're gonna learn about it. All right, all right, fair enough. If crows have boobs, I How is that so shocking shocked. if a crow has boobs? A bird? An animal? I guess I never thought about it. Huh. Hmm. When we do our lyrical analysis, hopefully we find out yeah. what the hell crow tit means. Uh, so Silver Spoon or Bape Say uh, was released on November 30th, 2015 and appears as the sixth track for their fourth mini album. The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Part 2. And as the eighth track of CD1 in their first compilation album, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Young Forever. Oh, yeah. This song has a Japanese version, what's new, featured in their second Japanese studio album, Youth. So, Jared, so far, we've heard one, two, three songs in full. Deep Dive. Four. Which ones? Oh, Intro Nevermind. Yep. Butterfly. Yep. House of Cards. Yes. And I guess we haven't heard. We have heard the a few in full Busan. at Busan. Yeah, but not Deep Dives. We heard Ma City in full. Yeah. We heard Run, Run. in full, I believe. Yeah. But we haven't done Deep Dives into it. All right. So Silver Spoon is up next. 
and everybody we hope you have enjoyed your Thanksgiving feast if you had one and that your silver spoon mm. is digging into some sweet potato pie right about now as you sit back and watch our reaction to Crow Tit. Let's go. Here we go, everybody. Let's hear what this song is all about. Come on. Bouncy. Yeah. Maka, Alana, Aparna, and Safi, and Ashley are talking about. Yeah. Almost came up out of my seat at certain parts of the song, Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I didn't write down much because how can you, right? When 
that beat is just uh, beating you over the head. Do, 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 do. It's like bullets. It reminded me of basketballs. Everything about this song reminded me of basketball. This was a basketball warm-up song. Do you remember when we used to make playlists? Yes. That we used to play in the gymnasium. We used to hand to the coach. Yeah. And he used to put it in the CD player. Yes. Yes. If we knew about this song back then, Jim, oh yeah, oh yeah, this would be probably number ten on the playlist because by the time you get to it, ah, it's the very last song before you go to the bench, yeah, and you prepare to start the game. Yeah, this is one of those. It's got that older twenty, like early twenty tens, yes, sound to it, but the beat is so well crafted that that certain part hits you every single time like yes, you said yes it's deceiving in a way yeah I, I wrote down three lyrics that's all i caught okay try harder we're tryhards mm. and then sugar hit us with something like i have crow tit legs oh did he say legs oh i don't know i i didn't catch that one yeah, yeah. I was on the lookout for the word pro tit. <laughs> and I think I found it. I think Sugar. Sugar said something about crow tit legs. Oh, there it is. I've got a crow tit's legs. And you have a stork's, stork's legs. Stork's legs. They all say their legs are worth a million bucks. I Sugar don't know. spit. Sugar spit. He he slid up on this beat and he spit. Now RM spit too, brother. J Hope did too. Let me tell you something. Go ahead. V, JK, Jimin, and Jin spit. Oh, they spit. Okay, I was... You didn't hear? I heard I heard JK spit, but the rest, it seemed like they were harmonizing in a way, or did they actually spit? All right, this is as close to rapping, other than on a song like Dang, where we heard the vocal line. This is as close to rapping as it gets okay. for the vocal line. All right. Um, JK spit in the most obvious way. Yeah. I mean, this man said, you must be kidding me. <laughs> you must be kidding me. He said that in English? He said that. Uh, you must be kidding me. Right? And then at times, Jimin just gives us that fiery, high-pitched spitting. Yeah. Right? Just one words or one line. Yeah. Um, at the end or towards the end, if you heard, if you listen very closely you would hear a loud high-pitched scream or a screech that reminded me of a crow now <laughs> it sounds like an ad lib from one of the members of the vocal line at the very very end or no like they did it a few times toward the end like right here yeah Bethany. Before that, then. Okay. Go back further. Okay. Hey, Jared. <laughs> I'm gonna hand this to you. That's the defibrillator. All right. The next right. time I hear that bass, I'm going out. All right. Right there, oh. Okay. Jerry, first of all, the injection goes right here, not on oh. my heart. No, wait this, your the, chest. the fibrillator goes on my heart. Oh, okay. The injection goes right here. And nonetheless, we he got it. Near Pope we out. got it in your body. All right. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Anything else you have to say <laughs> about your first listen of Bape Say? Well, this was your first listen too, Jared. Yes. Um, I think you gave some very interesting analysis. You said that that sounded like a crow. Yeah. Can I ask you one question? Yeah. How the hell you know what crow sounds like? I don't. The only reason a crow is in my mind is because. 
uh, the nickname for this song is Crow Tit. And Sugar said he had crow legs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jared, Army tells us that not only when we get to the live performances are we going to lose our minds even more. But as Aparna mentions, the song just hits 10 times harder when you get the extra layer of perspective okay. and find out what the song is actually about. Yeah. So how about we do that now, Jared? Let's head over to Dual Set and check out these lyrics. Let's go. Okay, so according to Dual Set, Bape Say is produced by P-Dog. Of course it was, Jared. So P-Dog was Jesus. behind there doing the boop, 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 boop. Of course he was, man. It was written by P-Dog, Supreme Boy, RM, and Slow Rabbit. And there's a long note here that says there's an idiom. This idiom, meaning if a crow tit or parrot bill tries to follow a stork. What the hell is a parrot bill? It'll split its legs. What in the hell does that mean? If a crow tit or parrot bill tries to follow a stork, it'll split its legs. It teaches how you should tailor your ambitions to measure or to the measure of your abilities or the resources given to you. You should tailor your ambitions to the measure of your abilities or the resources given to you. Interesting. Mm. BTS often calls themselves as crow tits, pronounced bape say. Oh, I see. So bape say is the Korean term <laughs> for crow tits. This song is actually okay. called crow tits. Well, Jared, crow tits means a completely different thing True. than what True. we initially thought. All right, let's just... Let's... Und underdog, right? Yeah, let's let's proceed. Okay. Well, can we search up the word crow tit? I think it's yeah, a good yeah. time to do that now. And hopefully nothing too crazy pops up. Okay. So the first thing that pops up is the many meanings of Korean crow tit. Demystified. Demystified. But look, it says originally crow tit referred to a small puffy bird. Okay, yeah. yeah. However, after being used in a Korean proverb, the term crow tit came to refer to someone who is trying too hard to fit in by becoming something they aren't. Got it. Makes sense because that's what they talk about in the song. Yeah. Wear tryhards or try harder. Yeah. Yeah. All okay. Right. So it is an actual bird. Yeah. A small little puffy. But that's yeah, a tiny Not thing. a big crow, as I was imagining. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or not. And not the crow's boob. Yeah. Okay. The note continues. BTS often calls themselves as crow tits, underdogs, those who started with disadvantages, the powerless in the society, and so on. Mm. They nonetheless refuse to frame themselves within the limit of crow tits. They rather challenge the norm and gladly split their legs. Though it's painful and takes a whole lot more efforts, more of efforts, they do succeed in walking along or even past storks. Okay. And it says here that storks, pronounced Huangse, in this context means those who are born with advantages. Okay. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. So I see the analogy being drawn here. The contrast highlights the severe socioeconomic inequality in Korea. Okay. All righty. Can we just real quickly Look up search a up a stork? Yeah. I know they're talking about something other than just the bird. But ah, here we go. Got it. Yeah. Oh, that makes so much more sense, George. Explain it for me. So look, look at this stork. Okay. Right? Go back to the definition of a stork. A stork is a tall, the long, long legs. legs, waiting bird with a long, heavy bill and typically oh. with white and black plumage. So, whereas a crow tit is just this small little tiny, with tiny little legs. Yeah, exactly. So, storks have an advantage from birth. I would assume. Yeah, and that's what uh, the lyrics just told us. Yeah. The inequalities. Yeah. Uh, they're born with advantages. Yeah. Okay. All right. Starting to make a little more sense. The note continues. The English title of this song is Silver Spoon, 
which is synonymous <sighs> with inherited. We know what silver spoon is. Right. You're born with a silver spoon in your mouth. As a matter of fact, our father used to use that term so much when we were growing up. He said, we, ain't, we, ain't, we wasn't born with a silver spoon. That's what he used to say to us. Now keep crying. <laughs> You want something to cry for? I'll give you something to cry for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never mind, Army. <laughs> <laughs> we won't right. go there. So Silver Spoon is synonymous with inherited wealth. So the Korean title, Crotit, and English title, Silver Spoon, actually mean the opposite to each other. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. Crotit means underdog essentially yeah right like you're, you're you don't have an advantage yeah, 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 yeah silver spoon means you are a stork you exactly born with advantages so that is very interesting that they would use the title crotid instead of stork if they're also using the title silver spoon well let's read this last line all right it says they might have decided to title it silver spoon in english to emphasize that this song is about socioeconomic inequality and injustice. Okay. So essentially, you can name the song whatever, Jerry. Yeah. yeah. Like, you could, you could name the song Inequality. Yeah. You could name the song Wealth. Yeah. They're still talking about the same thing and giving a critique yes. of inequality, exactly. socioeconomic inequality. And we haven't even started the lyrics yet, Jerry. Jared, let's go, brother. I want to hear this. All right. So the lyrics begin, they call me a crow tit. This generation has suffered. Hurry and chase them. Thanks to the storks, my legs are all swollen. Thanks to the storks. Has the crow tit been running? Oh. Is that why the legs are swollen? So hmm. call me a crow tit. This generation has suffered. Hurry and chase them. My teacher, who's born as a gold spoon. Ooh, man. And it says background information, spoon class theory. Spoon class theory refers to the idea that individuals can be classified into different socioeconomic classes, mm. spoon classes, based on the income or assets of their parents. And that one's success in life depends entirely on being born into a wealthy family. The most commonly talked about spoon classes are in hierarchical order the gold spoon the silver spoon the bronze spoon the dirt spoon mm. and side note there's something called the diamond spoon class even above the gold spoons but the billionaires jesus i mean over here jared this is like sociology 101 yeah when we learned about upper class yep middle class yep lower class yeah essentially or, you have upper middle lower middle or in you know a long, long time ago, the bourgeoisie mm. and the proletariat. That's right. Class. You seem to soak up that information uh, better than I did. No. A smart guy. The lyrics continue, at the part-time job, there's a passion pay. Mm. There's passion pay. Uh, and here it says, passion pay refers to low wages or no wages at all, paid by employers for young workers. The term has been coined from the phenomenon where young and desperate workers accept extremely low wages, hoping that their hard work and passion will bring them decent jobs in the future. Oh, wow. Okay. Passion pay refers to low wages or no wages at all. Yeah. Paid by employers for young workers. It's been coined from the phenomenon where young and desperate workers accept extremely low wages, hoping that their hard work and passion will bring them decent jobs in the future. Yeah. So basically just working for nothing in the hopes that they'll get a decent job yeah. in the future, you know? The future will be bright. Okay. But I don't does it always pay off? Does it always work? Probably not. Yeah. At school there are the teachers. The bosses are harassing. Mm -hmm. The media talks about N poll generation every day. And here it says NPO generation basically means a generation that has given up on N things because of social pressures and economic situations. Mm. Uh, and then here we get a longer note that says Sampo generation. 
And we learned about the Sampo generation yeah. in a previous song. Yeah. Three giving up generation is a neologism in South Korea referring to a generation that gives up courtship, marriage, and having kids. Many of the young generation in South Korea have given up those three things because of social pressures and economical problems, such as increasing cost of living, tuition payments, and affordable housing scarcity. There is also the oppo sede, or five giving up generation, mm -hmm. which takes the same three and adds employment and home ownership. The chilpo sede, seven seven giving up generation further includes interpersonal relationships oh, and man. hope while Oof. the gupo sede nine giving up generation extends physical. to physical health and appearance finally the sipo sede ten giving up generation or wanpo sede total giving up generation culminates in giving up life The Sampo generation is similar to the Satori generation in Japan and generally overlaps in age and Western with Western millennials. Oh boy, I think we're going to have to do some more studying of I, this. I think you're right, brother. Um, <laughs> however, DK, DK TV oh, may yes. come to the rescue yeah. because uh, the brain is working right now. All right, Jordan, do you want to pick up here? Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, so they continue, change the rules, change, change. The storks want to maintain the rules, mm. but I can't let them have it. Bang, bang. 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 And that was RM, oh. I believe. And the only reason we were saying bang, bang is because we could read it <laughs> right there. We hadn't heard the song before. Everybody. Yeah. This is not normal. This is not normal. Ah, stop talking about effort, more effort. And there's a note here that says, seeing that the current young generation suffers from unemployment, lack of future opportunities, economic problems, etc. The old generation often insists that it's because the young generation does not put enough effort or lacks passion. Kids these days don't try hard. Mm. Some tend to think that kids these days who grew up without knowing much of the extreme economic problems, like ones they have in the past, are just complaining about little problems that they can overcome had they tried. And then it gives us a link to a V-Live. Yeah. Okay. So stop talking about effort, more effort. Ah, it makes me cringe. Ah, effort, effort, ah, effort, effort. Another note here says, you can clearly hear that Noryuk or effort is pronounced as no Noryuk with the O extended. Mm. This is not just for a rhythmic effect. From around 2015, being blamed for not exerting enough effort, the young generation started to make self-mocking jokes. Just an effort is not enough. We need oh. to put an effort. And then we have links to more V-Lives. Jesus. There's a lot going on in this yeah. song, brother. Crazy. Ah, there's no hope from the beginning. And another note. This term literally meaning that the sprout is yellow rather than green means that someone has no prospect of future. Mm. This term, it's yellow, or norah guna, rhymes with another term for, or the term for effort, noryuk. Okay. I'm trying to. You're trying to rhyme those two phrases <laughs> yeah, in your yeah, head. Yeah. I, I couldn't either. All right. So I'm just going to read those without the notes real quick. Ah, stop talking about effort. More effort. Ah, it makes me cringe. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, there's no hope from the beginning. Stork as expected. Okay. Yeah. So you're trying to sit here and tell me about effort. Mm. Effort, effort. That's... Look how I was born. There's mm. no hope from the beginning. Ah, you're a stork. Yeah. As expected. You would try to tell me about effort. Yeah. That's how I took it. Yeah. Stop talking about effort. Ah, it makes me cringe. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, there's no hope from the beginning. You know what this makes me think about? What? 
a term that we learned about and, and heard growing up and that you hear over here a lot. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yes. Yep. Well, said by people who did not pull themselves up <laughs> by their bootstraps. Exactly. Yeah. And said by some people who may have pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. Yeah. But a majority of people who tend to hold that belief, it feels like they may have been born at an advantage. Can I ask one question? How do you, yes, how do you pull yourself up by your bootstraps if you don't have any boots? You... <laughs> That's a great question. Right? Think about what it. What if like, you work your way, you have socks, yeah. then you have sandals, then you have shoes, then yeah. you have boots. Yeah. Then you're able to try and begin to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, but think about like a stork in this case is somebody who tells somebody who has boots That's true. that have bootstraps, who tells another person who doesn't have boots and no bootstraps to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. That's true. Yeah. Ironic. So they continue, you're indeed storks. You never disappoint. You're indeed storks. You live up to your name. You're indeed storks. Go have it all to yourself. You're indeed storks. Storks. All right, and this is where I'm going to hand it back off to you, brother. All right, because I've been talking too long. They call me a crow tit. This generation has suffered. Hurry and chase them. Thanks to the storks, my legs are all swollen. Mm. So they... So call me a crow tit. This generation has suffered. Hurry and chase them. My teacher who's born as a gold spoon. Mm. So the teacher is born as a gold spoon. I have crow tit's legs. Sugar. You have stork's legs. They say my legs are worth a million dollars. How can we compete in the same sport when mine are short? How can we? They say it's fair if the field is the same. It's not true. Never, never, never. It's not true. No. It's like that image, Jared, uh, looking out, out of a window, right? And people are standing on, is it money they have? Mm. And, or books. I can't remember. I'm going to try to find it. I know what image it. you're talking about. Yeah. Right. I'm not even going to try to explain the image. Yeah. Because you can it, put it up. Yeah. That's what that is reminding me of. Yeah. Never, never, never. One more thing. My teacher who's born as a gold spoon. Yeah. I don't know why that line hits me so much. I'm just imagining the dynamic between a teacher and a mm. student. And if the teacher's born with a gold spoon. Yeah. Right? Like they were born into wealth, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Can you really teach? Exactly. Right? And get through to somebody who may have been born with a dirt spoon. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'm sure you can teach. But can you really relate relate yeah. with your student? Exactly. And oftentimes the most powerful, impactful teachers are those who can relate. Those who have once oh, lived yes, the sir. struggle or the experience of their students. Yes, sir. Yes. Yep. Okay. The lyrics continue. Change the rules. Change, change. The storks want to maintain the rules. Uh, but I can't let them have it. Bang, bang. This is not normal. This is not normal. Ah, stop talking about effort. More effort. Ah, it makes me cringe. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, there's no hope from the beginning. Stork, as expected. <laughs> stop talking about effort. Ah, it makes me cringe. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, effort, <laughs> effort. Ah, there's no hope from the beginning. You're indeed a stork. And a dork. Saying that it's my fault? You're kidding, right? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no, no, no. The good part's coming up. Okay. Saying that this is fair? Oh, are you crazy? Crazy. Saying that this is justice? You must be kidding me. You must be kidding that me. That is my new favorite line. I don't know how I missed that. Jordan, the way he said it, like, he completely just overlooked that must is spelled M-U-S-T. Like, that is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you must be kidding me. 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 You must be out your mother mind. You ma, but ma, ma be kidding me. You ma be, ma be kidding me. Ah, stop talking about effort. More effort. Ah, it makes me cringe. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, there's no hope from the beginning. Oh my gosh, this it is an end. insanely. That might be part of the experience. Yeah. Right. 
similar to um i don't know why i have it in my head right now but the song spinebreaker oh my god i wrote down spinebreaker Jer. oh there you go i wrote down spinebreaker yeah exactly yeah it's one of those songs where you can feel yeah. that societal critique yeah within it but also like i'm going to get this message across yeah no matter how many times i have to say it it and I'm gonna keep repeating myself yeah. over and over and over yeah. again and hold your attention because you need to hear this. Yes, yeah. Mm. Stop talking about effort. Ah, it makes me cringe. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, effort, effort. Ah, there's no hope from the beginning. We're crow tits. We never disappoint. We're crow tits. We live up to our name. We're uh -huh. crow tits. Let's live together. We're crow tits. Crow tits. And it says, notice especially how they changed the third line from your indeed storks. Mm. Go have it all to yourself to we're crow tits. Let's live together. Like we're all crow tits? Ooh. Like even you? Yeah. Like there is no uh, divide. Mm. Right? Social hierarchy is in fact a social construction. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Arbitrary. Yeah. Arbitrary boundaries and constructions. Okay. They call me a crow tit. This generation has suffered. Hurry and chase them. Thanks to the storks, my legs are swollen. Mm. So call me a crow tit. This generation has suffered. Hurry and chase them. My teacher, who's born as a gold spoon. Interesting. Hurry and chase the teacher? Oh, I didn't take it chase as hurry and chase the teacher. This generation has suffered. Hurry and chase them. I feel like that could have many meanings. Like, hurry and chase this generation. Try to get through to them. They've suffered. Ah. Or, this generation has suffered. Hurry and chase those storks. Yeah. Chase them away. We don't need that mentality. But, Jared, they, they decided to end the song with my teacher who's born as a gold spoon. Yeah. What, is, an, what an interesting choice. Is the teacher a crow tit now? Right? When they called everyone crow tits. What's mm. the teacher? You ready to find out? I am more than ready to find <laughs> out, brother. All right, Army. Now that oh. uh, you have all sat and watched us try to interpret the lyrics to this song, yeah. uh, we're going to yeah. actually get a professional explanation <laughs> of this song yeah. by DKDK TV. And directly after that, we'll be checking out the dance practice for Crotit. That might be my new uh, favorite song title, Jared. What? You might be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> you could be real funny sometimes, dude. All right, let's check this out. DK, DK TV. All about Army. Explained by a career. Right now, Army's probably like, oh my gosh, I've never seen this side of Jared and Jordan before. <laughs> Army. <laughs> it's day, it's day what, Jared? Army is day 23. 23. It's day 23, Army. This is where the delirium sets in, Army. This is where Jared and Jordan goofiness sets in, right? The, the, the gin level. Unhingedness. Unhingedness. I mean. But let's try to remain. Okay. Remain Jared okay. and Jordan. Okay. All right. Hey, Jared. Yeah. I just dunked on you, buddy. You must be kidding me. Because it's day number 23. I just dunked on you, buddy. All right, here we go. Right, let's check it out. In all seriousness, like yeah. this song has a deep, <laughs> deep meaning 100%. behind it. 100%. So let's check it out. In light of BTS's new comeback, we are taking a look at their fiercest and most political song. All right. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. It means when you try to do something that's out of your reach, out of your capabilities, then you will likely fail. Crow tits or pepse have short legs, but storks have very long legs. Yeah. So obviously a crow tit trying to catch up to a stork will likely fail. Mm -hmm. Here the storks are referring to people in power, the big companies, conglomerates, and older generations. 
And in this video, I will focus on the last meaning of older generations uh, because the previous two meanings have been covered a lot by other explanations. Here, BTS is using Crotus as a metaphor for the younger generation or the millennials of South uh, Korea. They uh, are trying very, very hard to catch up with their parents' generation, uh, the baby boomers or the storks. Uh, they also use another metaphor of teacher to refer to the uh, older generation uh, who are born with a golden spoon. Uh, they say this because during the ages of the baby boomers in South Korea, they were experiencing huge economic growth and it was extremely easy to get jobs, get housing, and stuff like that. But the economy in South Korea is now at its maturing stages and the side effects of ultra-fast economic growth have boomerang to haunt the current generation. Uh. Currently, the millennials are facing extremely high pricing of houses as well as I mean, that's similar high to disparity between over here, yeah, poor yeah. and also extreme all-time high youth unemployment. Oh. In this verse, BTS addresses the social injustices that millennials commonly face in Korean society. For example, passion pay. This is a very common practice in Korean society where companies basically pay young workers below minimum wage or nothing at all. Interns. In Internship, exactly. Experience. The company's logic is because they are offering a job and an experience that many young people have passion for, they are the ones Crazy. that are actually doing the service for the young people. Enposete is another newly made word that is used to describe the millennials of this decade. They are a generation that have basically given up what many consider to be basic human rights and wants because of extremely high youth unemployment rates and also very low wages compared to living costs. Mm. We have many different variations of Empo Sede to describe the millennials of South Korea. It originally started from Sampo Sede, which is mm. used to describe the millennials that have given up dating, marrying, and giving birth due to economic instability. Then it evolved to Opo Sede, which added giving up employment and buying your own house. And then it evolved into Chilpo Sede, which added human relationships and hope. Now the word Empo Sede is most commonly used because they have basically given up all their dreams and Wow. Hope. Oh. In these lines, BTS talks about their want to change the system. Mm. The word 정상 in the last lines has a double meaning. First, it means normal, and second, it means top. So basically, not only is BTS talking about how this is not a normal situation, society is sick, but also they are saying we are not at the top yet and we have to push further. Here, BTS addresses how the older generation blames the millennials for their struggles, saying that it is due to a lack of effort. Mm -hmm. The word 노력 is pronounced 노력 by BTS, and this is a very commonly used internet slang among millennials to sarcastically describe how the older generation blames them for the lack of effort. Uh. Baby boomers often neglect the fact how society is completely different now compared to when they were growing up, and also the economic situation is completely different. They also neglect the fact that a lot of the economic problems that these millennials face today were in fact caused by baby boomers. <laughs> oh, For example, snap. housing prices that are extremely high so that millennials have basically given up buying their houses. These were driven up by baby boomers buying multiple houses in, in speculation mm. and for investment purposes. Yet many baby boomers simply neglect the fact and tell the millennials that they should try harder, mm. work harder, so that you can perhaps buy a house yeah. 20 years later. <laughs> On the surface level, these lines just simply seem like a cry for help, a call for a helping hand. However, the word pepsia in the very last line is a very clever play on words. Basically, this word would sound like a curse word to the Korean ear. It sounds very, very similar 
to shibseya or keseya, oh. which are both very serious curse words in South <laughs> Korea. So not only are they crying for help, and not only are they asking the protests to unite, but they are also calling the older generations. Oh, okay. <laughs> So sort of a triple entendre in a sense. Yeah. Um, wordplay, crazy. Yeah. Jordan, for me at least, right? You can disagree. I think the meaning behind this song is even more powerful than the song itself. <laughs> Jared, I mean, <laughs> Aparna tried to warn us. The song hits 10 times as hard. That's right. When you get that extra layer of perspective. That's right. That's, That's right. Parna told us, brother. That's right. I, I think listening to some of the live performances we have <sighs> waiting for us, this song is going to be completely different. Getting little bits and pieces of this dance practice. Oh, yeah. Hit. Right? Jared, a cry for help. A call for the... The young generation to unite. Yeah. Yeah. And calling the baby boomers and the older generation mother f Jordan, all wrapped into one. And I wonder if JK's you ma be kidding me oh, was a little hint at the word mother. Well, at the end here, you heard him say how the the word sounds like the curse words in yeah. korean however the word pepsia in the very last line is a very clever play on words basically this word would sound like a curse word to the korean ear it sounds very very similar to shipseya or keseya which Pepsi. are both very serious curse words <laughs> in south korea so not only are they crying for this. help and not only are they asking the protests to unite but they are also calling the older generations <laughs> <laughs> oh that's it right there Jared. yeah any final words before we dive into back to back to back to back concerts live performances dance practice whatever we got no i'm just really um in awe of bts's ability to go there yeah. right to take that risk mm. in 2015 when this song was created <laughs> And to call the baby boomers mother effers, Jordan, right? This is, it's risky. And it's a statement. Yeah. And it seems like they've done this more than once. Yes. You mentioned Spinebreaker. What other political, societal critiques, critical songs they got Jared. yeah i don't know right now we have to make a decision though do we want to watch the dance practice first or do we want to watch our first live performance sure dance practice because we have to see the choreography first okay yeah it's just a question brother absolutely jeez all right let's check out this dance practice it's actually a bong ton bomb i believe mm. um a bape say Dance practice. All right. Let's see. Let's go. Break dance. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at RM's outfit. Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Excited version. Hey. Hey, when Boot JK, Timberland yeah. JK steps in, he's different.
It's like slow motion. That is amazing. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. A lot of crotch movements in there, Jerry. Is RM a pro tip? Looks like a stork. <laughs> what if he's impersonating a stork? Okay, yep, crazy, crazy version. I'm not sure what I'm watching right Proceed? I think so. <laughs> I have a question that I want to ask. Ask it. Rank them. Rank what? From the most mesmerizing to the least mesmerizing. Hearing the song itself for the first time. Okay learning about the meaning behind the song okay for the first time or watching this dance practice for okay. the first time most mesmerizing what was it three different experiences most mesmerizing go i don't know what you mean by mesmerizing this was the most mesmerizing of the three for me the dance practice okay yeah i'd have to agree with that and then comes if the by meaning, mesmerizing oh, and then okay. comes the song itself if by mesmerizing, mesmerizing. you mean crotch throwing twerking butt slapping mesmerizing then yeah hopping on people's backs i mean oh yeah if that's what you mean then yeah Jared, this was pretty mesmerizing yeah that was insane chaotic synchronicity 
insane chaotic synchronicity i think that about sums it up there we go jared let's keep this whole party moving army, army. holy crow tit army what is happening Bobby kid. next up we have our first live performance We don't know exactly what year this comes from, but I think it's safe to assume around 2015. Army, okay. let us know if you don't. Let's check it out. Looks Let's like go. they're in all black. Come on, Jor. Here we go. If they do this choreography, I, I imagine they will. Now, that dance practice we watched was the excited version. Okay. It, was, it seemed to be the fun version. What is the non-excited version? I don't know. I mean, we've seen... I forget exactly what they call them, but basically fun versions yeah, yeah. to dance practices before. So that explains the craziness. But the dance practice in itself, like the choreography in itself, is crazy. Yeah. Like, do they do those moves? Let's, Let's find, find out. Let's find out, man. I'm turning this all the way up on me. Yes. Enjoy. Oh, you hear that bass? Oh, you hear that bass? Hey, 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 hey. There it is. Wobbly legs. Oh my god. Oh, there it is. Yeah, close your eyes on me. Oh, it's like the waves. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, 
Who that? Who that, Joe? J Hope? Who is that? That's J Hope, Joe. Breakdancing? Watch this. Watch this here. Watch. Joe, watch this. Look. Look, look. Yeah. One more. Watch. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I get it. Now I get I get all the hubbub about this song. Your mouth was wide open. What are you thinking? You get it. I get it. Explain what you get. I because get I don't get a goddamn thing. I don't get how you can move your body like jello like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. So tell yeah. me, please, inform me, Jerry. Um, I've already said it. This is a song that forces you to pay attention. Um, I'm sure if we look back at our reaction to this live performance, we will both see that our mouths were wide open. Jordan, I, I was sitting here like, I don't even know where to look. I don't even know what to make of it. Yeah. There is so much going on. <laughs> And it feels like every single member is literally telling us, requiring us to become crow tits. <laughs> wait, I'm wait, a, can I say one thing? I'm a crow tit now. Hey, hey, fuck. We're all crow tits. We're all crow tits Can I say now. one thing? Yeah. Please. Every single, and this may, may be reading into it too much. I want to be a stork. Every single movement that they made in this entire performance, as well as the dance practice, resembles a crow tit. <laughs> they didn't go too far. They lifted their legs. They wobbled. All those little movements, Jared, that we look at and we're like, wait, what is that? Like, what? It looks it looks like it matches the beat so well, like they're yeah. so, but it's like they have limited mobility, wow. right? And they're not going too far. They all stay pretty much in the same compact space. Are they? trying to act as if they're a pack of crow tits? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. What you just said, without the context of this song, if you said that on the street, <laughs> a pack of crow tits. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody back. would tell you to leave their goddamn store Jordan, immediately. Jordan, wait a minute. It's fresh you in my mind. Hold, hold on. Hold on. You have gone mad. Hold on, hold on. So you said they have limited mobility. That's what it looked right? like to me, right? Like they're yet. They're, yet. It looked like they have like a an innate magnetism, if that makes sense. They're all connected. To each other. To each other, right? Okay. One person does this, the other, the wave continues yes. throughout. Hey. Right? That's the ripple effect of being crow tits, crow Right? Of the movement. That's how you build a movement. One person starts it and it goes out. <laughs> sure. Okay. I, I don't know if we're just tired right now or if we just made a an amazing discovery. <laughs> um, I think it's a little bit of both. Army's gonna let us know. Um, Jerry, can I just ask oh my Army? Gosh, I'm feeling empowered right now by this song. Like very empowered. We're crow tits. You, you damn right we are. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. One question for Army: the crotch yeah. movements. Can you please let us know? what those are all about. Because I know in the DKDK TV explanation video, yeah. we saw it said essentially something like they're making my crotch get tired. Ah, and yes. in the lyrics on Duel said it said you're making my legs, legs get swollen. Get swollen. My, like my crotch gets swollen. Yeah. yeah. And every time they make that move, that's what I think about. But I also take it sort of as like a, a F you to the older generation. Wow. The baby boomers. That's what I take it as. Yeah. Because that movement, Jared, I mean, that's, you can take that as disrespect. Yeah. Right? When somebody, do, if somebody does that to you, that's basically saying, S my D. Oh, okay. I see where you're going. Right? Yeah. So I just want, I, I want Army's perspective right. in the most respectful way possible. Yeah. Respectfully. Respectfully. If we, if we were born in New York City, yeah. we would say respectfully. And Orange verse was crazy. Or every time he, he says that little hook, I don't know if it's a hook, I don't know if it's a verse. Bang, bang. I don't know. Let's continue on with these live performances, Jordan. Okay. Um, the next live performance, everybody, comes to us from the Music Bank in 2016. 
uh, let's check it out. I don't even know what else to say. Let's go. Here we go, everybody. Keep it going, Jordan. <laughs> Keep it going. I'm just going to sit here with my mouth wide open. Keep it going, man. Jordan, next up, we have a fan cam. So this is up close and personal. Let's hope the crotch movements don't break the camera. Come on now. This comes from the Love Yourself Tour in Hamilton from 2018. Quick, come on. One minute, 54 second clip. Here we go, everybody. I need more. Here we go. Don't make me have to use a go ahead, injection go ahead, go on ahead, you, Jerry. Go ahead. I need more. <laughs> oh, sure, he looks like a bird. He looks like a crow tip. Oh my different gosh. in this Jordan. You're breathing like a dog right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Safi. Safi, you were right. Wait, except, Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. except Safi, we needed the injections and defibrillator for this song Jordan, as stop, well, Safi. Stop, 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 stop. Jared, we almost didn't make it there. Jordan? You're lucky we survived, Jared. Jordan? That was crazy. <laughs> J. That was crazy. J Hope just did a split. You saw that, right? He did a split. You saw that, right? I saw and then that. he popped back. You saw that? I saw that. You need to see it again? 100%. What just happened? That right there was... Let me cool it. Let me cool down. That, Jordan. Yeah, brother. We just got the best possible viewing of that performance. Yeah. Right? You saw every single member literally come up to the camera because the main camera was right next to this person who was recording. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh that my gosh. Crazy. Oh my gosh. I, I, I do want to say one thing about what we just watched. Okay. Go ahead, Jared. BTS are some bad, bad men. Okay. Yes, they are, Jared. Bad men. Yes, they are, Jared. No, like, I'm being so serious when I say that. I know it sounds funny, Jordan. I'm, I'm, nobody's laughing, Jared. If you look. If you look at the ferocity, 
in their faces, in their bodies, in their souls while they're performing this song, mm -hmm. right? It's such a serious song, yet at the same time, such a satirical and funny song. Yep. Jordan, they perform it like it's their last song, like their lives are on the line here. Because there are lives on the line. This is like, this is ridiculous. And I... Take your time. Throughout most of this performance, my eyes were fixated on RM. Oh, for some reason in the last performance, my eyes were fixated on RM. RM is the leader of the Crotids. He's the glue. He's the glue. Like he pops out of the center yep. often. He knows every single beat. Yeah. He hits it. Yeah. He yeah. He yep. holds it all together. Yeah. Do you have anything to say? J Hope. What the hell what the hell was this? Uh, nobody told us to expect the unexpected. That's right. Well, as a matter of fact, I guess they have been saying that since the very oh, beginning. Oh my gosh. But this was so utterly unexpected to see J-Hope in, oh my God, are those leather pants, Jared? We're not talking baggy pants. We're talking tight. Oh my, to see him hit that split and then pop up and uh, pop something else. That was different, and we're going to watch it uh, one more time because it's, Look, the, most it's replayed the most replayed part part of the song. Play that, Jordan. You really feel like you're there. You can hear the bass oh in a gosh. different manner. That was an out-of-body experience because that was totally unexpected. Unexpected. Yeah. Let's, Let's check this out again. <laughs> Man, pops right back up, Jared. Like he wasn't done. Jared, how difficult is it to first of all do a split but second of all pop back up from the split in the at the same time you do it okay one more time he looked like i mean i want to say elvis but uh, even elvis can't do that right he ain't done look at rm that was right the now. climax of the whole thing but look at rm right now right? RM damn near just smacked the camera, Jim. Jordan. Look at that. RM ferocity. just damn near smacked the camera. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it gets much better than that. I don't know, Jerry. That's crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is an anthem for the young generation. Yes. That's why every single army in that stadium or arena was going crazy for this song. There's a there's a deeper level of connection to this yes. song. Yes. It's not a song like Butterfly. Yeah. Or Two Three. Yeah. No, this is a call to action. Yeah. This one right here. Okay. All right. Let's pull it together, brother. All right. Let's hang in there. We What's have next? three more videos to check out. Okay. Of course, it's not a completed deep dive if you don't have a JK. That's right. V Live performance to it. So uh, let's check that out. This one comes from 2021, everybody. Let's go. Here we go. After the pattern. <laughs> How's, how's he gonna sing this one? Yeah. Okay. He's I wonder if he'll rap. He's gonna rap it. Ha, he's gonna stand up. Oh, 
<laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Did he just woof? I'm sorry, dude. That's what a crow, crow tit sounds like. Oh. You sure? Do it some of the choreography. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, JK, don't do it to us, brother. <laughs> Okay. In the golden pajamas. Hey. He's a golden spoon now. <laughs> That's why, brother. They done made themselves into some golden spoons now, oh, man. That is a great point. Or diamond spoons. I forget oh, which one was the highest. My gosh. It is a disservice to listen to this song without knowing the meaning behind it first. Mm. And. I think the first time anyone should ever listen to this song should be that live performance that we watched where J-Hope did the split. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Think I mean, you may, not, you may not be able to pick up the meaning from that. No. But you feel it. Night and day. Our first listen of this song. Yeah. To, to where we're at now. To where we're at now. <laughs> Completely night and day, Jordan. Yeah, brother. Oh my gosh. Maka knew this was going to hit us. Yeah, yeah. Maka knew. This is what I call a slow burner. Mmm. But when it burns, it burns. Yeah. In all honesty, after the first listen, I wouldn't have put this in my top, top 20 favorite BTS songs. How are you feeling now? I think it's in there now. Top 20. Top 20. So it's not breaking your top 10 like Maka's? No, not yet. Okay. The song itself. The li if, we're, if we're ranking like oh, live okay. performances, I mean, that's definitely in the top 10. All right. That's split. Um, just a quick call to Ashley. Ashley Frederick. Are you still with us? Are you still living? Let's hope so. Um, Jared, we have two final videos to watch. Okay. What do we have? Next up, Jordan, we have a video that may require or may cause us to get those defibrillators, defibrillators back out. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a compilation video of the hip thrusts and all the crotch stuff going on. Yeah, that's what we're told. So let's go. Are we ready? I think so. It might be hip thrust overload. Well, we know what to do if that happens. I wasn't coming into this expecting one hip thrust. No. I thought JK gave us enough. Yeah. Let's check this out, everybody. BTS Bape Say Sexy Compilations Part 1 is what it's titled. Uh, that's what they're calling it. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, 
Hasta oh. pronto. Oh, what's that one from? <laughs> that looked like Busan. I don't think. Did they perform this at Busan? I don't, they didn't perform this at Busan, did they? I don't know. This is crazy. This is crazy, dude. And they don't do it softly. They're doing it. No. <laughs> oh, it's like an art to it. Watch their hair when they do it. They do it three times. Right? Watch their hair too. Especially JK. Oh, slow motion. The Sh shit? Sugar ain't got no time to move the hair. He just. He's just a simple man. <laughs> Who's that, Jim? I think so. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Jared, it keeps getting better and better. What? I what? think I think you're right about the the SMD. That's what it felt like. Because they do it three times, right? They say oh. S M D. <sighs> All right, Army. Last but not least, we have a video or a short, as a matter of fact, of Yungi reacting to Hobie's hip thrust. Oh boy. Now, Jared, what we just watched, from what we just watched, I think we can learn a bit about the members' personalities based on how they just thinking that based on how they hip thrust. Sugar's a simple man. He don't need to move his head. Nope. No need to get his hair moving at all. Nope. Just give him three hip thrusts, and it's done. He gets the job done. <laughs> J.K. On the other hand, you need some hair action. You need it. You need that head movement. J.K.'s a wild boy. Wild boy. Now J-Hope. <clears throat> J-Hope is into some freaky, <laughs> freaky things. All right, we'll stop there. We'll stop there. That's it. That's as far as we're going to go, Army. Let's check out this funny YouTube short of Sugar reacting to J-Hope's hip thrust. Here we go. Y'all remember when Yoongi said this? Oh. Y'all yeah. remember when Yoongi said this? Ah, yeah. that's about right. Look at Sugar's face on stage. <laughs> you think there was an element of like Sugar play in there? Oh, absolutely. Play into the crowd? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jared, we all know. Play back the reaction when J Hope did yeah, all that he yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We damn near fell out of our seats. Yeah, yeah. She was like this. She like, all right. It was nice doing business with you. You as well. Army. Very educational one here. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> In all seriousness, no, like this was an educational journey. This was an educational journey as well as a mesmerizing I'm at a loss for words it's the ultimate Help. dichotomy mm. the ultimate like you, complete education <laughs> and just complete chaos 
synchronized at the same chaos, time. like you said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't even know what to say, girl. Hmm. One, two, three. You, you must be kidding me. me. I didn't know what you were doing there. All right, everybody, that wraps up Bape Say. We're going to go get some sleep and try to process what we just went through. If there are any additional live performances or other content that we did not get to, other Bapesay related content out there, send it our way, please. And if you could give us your input about this song, about the dance practice, about the choreography, the live performances, the meaning behind the song, yeah. crow tit, anything, Army, let us know in the comments down below. Um, we hope that we were able to hold it together enough to give this song the justice <laughs> and proper reaction that it deserves. Yeah. However, as soon as we got to the dance practice, we quickly realized that, oh, this is one of them ones that uh, mm -hmm. is going to take us all over the place. So mm -hmm. I don't even know if an apology is necessary, Army, but I apologize for my actions today. Army, I apologize for my actions as well. What you saw here was not characteristic of <laughs> who we are, okay? Um, yeah, so we'll do better. We love you so much. Thank you all for watching another reaction. We will see you all very soon. Do not forget, be kind, and keep an open mind, everybody. Peace. Put it